Right, folks, another week, another football video, also another co-host. Um, Martin is back on the Racing Records videos. Martin, it is good to have you back. Thank you very much, Ryan. It's been it's been a long time, but uh, it's good to come back and uh, talk about football rather than uh, the horse racing for a change. Yeah, and uh, we're joined by Kieran Newbury again. Kieran, good to have you back. Yeah, thanks very much for having me again. I enjoyed the last time. Thought it went very well. Glad to be here again. Thanks again. Yeah, uh, your bets didn't do very well, though. <laughs> no, they didn't do very well at all, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, I think we had one up in the whole thing. Uh, Liverpool to win and both teams to score came up at 12 to 5. So that yeah, was the only thing we had. Um, so we'll get straight into it, boys, and we'll do a travel this week. Um, my first team, well, my only team, uh, will be Millwall. Um, Millwall have drawn their last three now in a row. So I would be expecting them to turn that form around a bit. Um, they're playing Sheffield Wednesday. They have the home advantage. Sheffield Wednesday have been fairly poor away this season now. Um, and I can see Millwall scraping a win here. What do you think? I yeah. think um, I think Millwall was in Millwall, Millwall have drawn fourteen games this season, which is amazing. From more, more than um, anyone else in the championship. Jesus, and it's did Sheffield uh, Sheffield Wednesday beat Bournemouth, Bournemouth. Yeah. the other night as well. And yeah. you are seeing you see it you see it in the Premiership a lot, and you see it in the Championship a lot, where the the, the lower sides do beat. The uh, do beat the top sides in 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 the sense that Sheffield Wednesday do, but then they lose to the other teams around them or yeah. or below them or above them. In fact, um, so there is there is a case to be made for um, for Millwall. Um, they've got to get over this this drawing habit, though, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, look, they're they're even money going for it. They are decent price now. Um, I suppose, Martin, what are you going for this week? I'm going to go for one of my favourites I've been following all season, which is Tramir Rovers. Tramir Rovers to beat Port Vale at 11 to 10 at the moment. Um, when they played each other, it's quite an interesting game actually. When they played each other back in November, it finished um, Port Vale 3, Tramir 4. There were players sent off, there were penalties. Uh, Tramir scored in the 93rd and the 96th minute. To win the game, so you can't read too much into the form of that game. Yeah, it's just how it is. However, um, you look at you look at Tranmere Rovers; they haven't lost like forever. Uh, they've just signed David Nugent, ex England international. He did play for them and he did score for them. Um, so he's come on board till the end of the season. So although he's 35, he brings experience. He brings knowledge. He brings all sorts of things to the club. I think Tramway are going to are going to go places personally. Um, Port Vale, I think they've won a couple of games this uh, in January, and they've drawn a couple and they lost a couple, so they're a bit they're a bit dodgy. They've got an interim boss. Um, Tramway are up to fifth now. I think they're going in the right direction. So yeah, eleven to ten Tramway for me at home. Got to be for me any team. Odds against at home has got to be worth looking at. Yeah, um, Tramier would be Peterborough during the week, didn't they? They did in the cup. Yeah, yeah, so, and that That's... was you, you could have had Peterborough at three to one, which some of us did. Um, can I just give you another fact about Tramier while I'm at it? Yeah, Yeah, I looked at the last week. Uh, you could have had Tramier at fifty to one to win the league. And the price in League Two is being manipulated by the fact that Carlisle have got three games in hand over pretty much everyone else around them, albeit they lost to Forest Green Rovers on Tuesday night, and they won't be playing this weekend because their game against Cheltenham's called off. And I couldn't I think it's to do with COVID, I'm not, not quite sure, but their game is off again. So they'll have another game in hand. So um, at the moment, you've got Carlisle, who are about 11 to 8, 6 to 4, something like that, to win the league, but only on the basis that they've got these games in hand. Tranmere were 50 to 1 a week or so ago. They were 25 to 1 yesterday. They're 20 to 1 today. I just checked them before we came on. So they're 20 to 1 to win the league. They're fifth in the league. And I think they're like two points off top 
which is Cambridge at the moment. Yeah. I think that's a massive price. And you can go each way, of course, so you can get second, second to third at that 25 to 1 price, or the 20 to 1 price as it is now. I think that's a proper, proper value bet. Um, like I said, I took it at 50 to 1 a couple of weeks ago. Um, so, yeah, anyone out there looking for an outright bet for the for the end of the season, have a little look at Tranmere. And don't just look at the the Carlisle situation. Look at the whole thing as a as a group. Um, I think Tranmere have got a fairly easy month. If you look at if you look at their fixtures, they've got to play Carlisle at the end of the month, which will probably be a telltale sign for them. Um, but yeah, it might be something worth having a go at. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Kieran, your team for this weekend. Yeah, my team this week. I'm picking is West Ham in Fulham. Uh, I was very shocked at the price of West Ham. There, I think it's 11 to 10, which I thought was a crazy price, seeing as Fulham haven't won a game in the league this year yet, and they're struggling big time. They're really struggling, and West Ham are flying. Apart from the game, obviously, there against Liverpool. Liverpool played fantastic, but, you know, West Ham played brilliant this season. Like, I thought they have shocked everybody, and they're flying. I think they're fifth in the league now at the moment. Like, they're still up there. Like, they're fighting, they're fighting their, their way up there. And uh, I think Fulham only 5-2, to two, something like that, which I thought was a shock to me now. I know they're away from home, but I think an easy win that well, should be anyway, going by logic for West Ham. But I think 11-10 is a great price for them. You know, good form. Bet uh, uh, Aston Villa there last week, or the other day even, with Jesse Lingard signing, scoring two goals in his debut, which was uh, a strange sign I thought at the time. But... Jeez, if you can get him playing and the players around him, like the West Ham playing brilliant football, and I think it's a great price at 11 to 10 for them to win that game. Yeah, it definitely are. Switchek, Lingard, and Antonio yeah. Wilkes like, together, that could be a frightening. Yeah, lethal. Three, like, yeah. It, it really is lethal. There's plenty of goals in between. Yeah, definitely. I suppose Lingard was, he was kind of wasted in United. He was probably overhyped to a certain extent where. Right, get this lad off. He's not as good as we want him to be. He's not the, I suppose, Sanchez's or Messi's or whatever. Like, yeah. they were trying to replace him by someone bigger, but maybe they should have stuck out with Lingard. Yeah, well, he's definitely hit the ground running for West Ham anyway. That's a, I think he got man to match. He was awarded man to match for the game as well. So, a great 90 minutes for him. Two goals. Yeah, yeah very good for him. Yeah, the West the West Ham the West Ham form is quite interesting actually. They lost they lost their first two games of the season, I think Newcastle and Arsenal, I think it was. And since then, they've lost to Liverpool twice, Chelsea and Man United. Jeez. That's yeah. it. Okay. So they beat they beat the lowest sides, yeah. All yeah. the time. And therefore that's that's a value bet. That has to be a value bet of the day, surely. Yeah, I was shocked now at that price. I couldn't believe it when I seen it, to be honest. I'll tell you what, Moise has done an absolutely fantastic job with West Ham. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Absolutely like, unbelievable. He, he really is. He's a fantastic manager. Like, he... United were probably wrong to sack him at the yeah. time. I... He's now got the same number of points or, or within one or two points as he got in t- in, for the entire season last season. That's crazy. That's right. Some difference. Like it just shows when he was allowed to build a team, he is well capable of building a team. Yeah. And I suppose he didn't really get the back you know, United that he's getting at West Ham as well. Mm. But he showed but, it. Uh, he showed it at Everton as well. He did at Everton. You know, he built oh, sides yeah. at Everton and they competed and all the rest of it. And this season was supposed to be Everton season. They were supposed to be knocking on the door and whatever. Everton want to be where West Ham are. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, he did. He's done a Everything that he did. <clears throat> I, I fancy Everton myself. I thought they'd do great, and then when they got Rodriguez and Rodriguez hit the ground, absolutely flying, mm-hmm. and he's he's just gone a bit astray now, hasn't he? I think he's been found out a little bit. Yeah, in one sense, yeah. It's cold and wet up north. <laughs> yeah, he's not used to it. <laughs> not that Colombian <laughs> Um, boys, I suppose we will move on to a value bet of the week. Um, just something outside of that travel. For me, I am going for Man United to win and both teams to score in the Everton game. Um, speaking of Everton, I think United are going to win. 
I, I can't see anything other than that happening. But I do feel Everton will be capable enough to score a goal. But I'd say United could win about 3 or 4-1. Scored a lot of goals the other day. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. We'll talk about that later. Um, Martin, yourself, what, what would you be? I've actually got two. Um, I've actually got two here. One is um, Newport in um, League Two. They were they were flying high. They were going well. They were winning their games, and they were they were top of the league for a while. They've kind of gone off the ball a bit the last two games. I think they've lost, but they've had players sent off in both of those games. And they also they can they score goals, but they can see goals as well. So I quite like both teams to score over two goals and Newport to win as a. As a as a three in your in your build build your bet option if you've got that on your uh, on your app and you can have that at three to one so that's a nice price and another one that caught my eye um, earlier earlier today was Burnley to beat Brighton at five to two so you've got a home side in the Premiership to beat a team. That's in well, Burnley are fourth bottom, Brighton are a couple of places but above them now because they've beaten Tottenham and, and Liverpool in the past week. It would appear Brighton get up for, for the big games. They play well against um against the big sides in the sense they beat Tottenham, they beat Liverpool. Can they do that against Burnley? Or will Burnley grind it out? You know, they're they're good at home, they they're, they're okay. I think five to two is a massive price. The only the only drawback to to that and maybe it's it's in the price there is the fact that we've had more away wins than we've had home wins in the premiership for the first time well in the top flight of all time um so there is there is a case to be made that the away teams are winning blah 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 but i just think having brighton having won the last two games against tottenham and against liverpool um as a Tottenham fan, it's difficult to uh, to, to say that. Um, Burnley at five to two at home to beat Brighton in any other season that would be a crazy price. So I think that might be a value bet as well. Yeah, and you're on yourself. Yeah, uh, my value bet. Well, not very much value, but my bet would be. I'm going to say Bruno Fernandes first goal for the United game and everything. And the feeling to be penalty scored in that game. Now, not sure it'd be first, but. Even if a penalty scored in the game as well, it might be a good bet. Like if some feeling of a penalty in that game, I don't know why. But uh, I'd say Fernandez, give or take, be usual four to one nine two in the boot. I'd say so you get him, but that's my bet for that. I say Bruno Fernandez first goal in that game. Yeah, there is a little bit of value there for sure. Um, I suppose boys, the past week has been crazy. Obviously, United being Southampton nine 0 that was just mental, wasn't it? Can't believe it. Right. You got you got to you got to look at Southampton. They lost. Can't, they lost. Was it eight or nine against Leicester last season? Yeah. Nine now. Nine again. Then yeah. They conceded six against Tottenham. Was it six or seven against Tottenham earlier this season? I think it was six. Yeah, it was. They they were they were leading, weren't they? Two one. I think we we say we yeah. came good in the second half and, and tore them apart. If you, if you're gonna if you're going to get sent off after two minutes at a side that's in the top four, you're going to have a hard night, especially if you can see goals the way that they can see goals. Um, I know a few people had 10, 10 nil as a as a bet. Um, it's a shame it didn't quite come off because that would have been, one, it would have been a record and two, some of my mates would have been ha- handsomely paid, eh, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I... <laughs> It's one of those things. That it comes around now and again. Um, and I think there were eight different scorers, were there not? Yeah. Um, who scored twice? Martial scored twice. Yeah. So there would have been eight different scorers, yeah. Um, oh, amazing. What about what about uh, the Louise sending off? Talk to me about David Louise's sending off. Because I still don't understand it today. Yeah, that was very harsh at all, wasn't it? But uh, Bednarak's final off as well for Southampton was very similar, I thought, as well. Mm. Um, neither of them should have been right cards. No, no, God, no. Not Definitely not. And Bednarak's one for Southampton shouldn't have even been a penalty. Because no. Martial was down like before Bednarak even clipped him at all. 
Like he was gone down, and I think it was just a little bit of contact on the knees or something. But um, I'm not a fan. Yeah, of what, what the VAR, for sure. Huh? I'm not a fan of the VAR. It's not my thing, especially when you see things like that, and and you you don't understand why the decision's been made. Um, the 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 goalie being sent off. When, when you see the Arsenal goalie being sent off at first sight, you think, oh, that was quite clever. And then when you see it in slow motion, you see it's even cleverer. <laughs> and he knew he was going to go. So, I don't know. Yeah, um, I think it causes more problems than it solves the VAR. I'm not a fan of it myself now. I think it was a bad idea bringing that in, to be honest. But good in some senses now for clean cut, you know, decisions. like. But you can't be making decisions, wrong decisions with the VAR there. Like it's, It doesn't make sense to me. Like Everyone else can see it, but obviously someone can't. And they're making these decisions that no one else understands. So it's a strange one for me now. I thought it'd be solved more than the fucking fixes, but it's not the way it's going for me in my eyes. I'd say to our uh, world fans up in the VR, that the... <laughs> it, it hasn't achieved what they thought it was going to achieve, I don't think. Yeah, there was, it was supposed to sort out issues and solve problems. Yeah, and actually what it's done is create more problems. Yeah. 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 Like when you're given all side for. Like some elbow or a short yeah. sleeve, like it's fingernail, game's gone. Days. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. the game, like, there's that's too tight of a margin, like, mm. to be given, to be honest. Like, fair enough, a leg or an arm, a full arm, like, <laughs> but the likes of an elbow or a short sleeve or anything like that, it's, it's yeah. stupid. Like, I think, I I think if, you, if you have to draw a line, right, if you've got to draw a line, then you just play on. Yeah. yeah, that's a fair one. Obvious. If it's obvious, if it's hit his hand, he stuck his hand up and it's hit his hand, or the guy's a yard offside or or whatever, um, and that's, of course, your Man City player and you're 30 yards offside, um, as, as we saw the other day. Um, why why don't you give the advantage to the attacking side and just, and just play on? Because actually that's what the fans are paying for. That's what the fans want to see. Because it's all about interpretation anyway, football. Yeah, no, 100%, Martin. Um, what do we make of the title now? I, I think it's fair to say City will be almost wrapping it up now at the minute. I think it's a massive game now, Sunday, to see yeah. what happens there. If they win that game, I think that's it, 100% finish. That's it over, I think. you got you got Man City at 1-6 to six now. Yeah, they're 1-6 to six to win the league. There's seven points... With a game in hand ahead of Liverpool, yeah, you were probably the only real side that could, you yeah, know, without being to Leicester, Man United, and, and Tottenham. Liverpool are probably the only one with the depth, and they haven't, and they're showing that they haven't got the depth to get anywhere near them. They, they're going to be ten points behind, and if they lose that weekend, they'll be thirteen points behind, which is similar to what happened last season with Liverpool the other way round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tough to see City throwing it away now at this age. I know the Bruyne's injured, but they have such a strong squad that they nearly could do it out the Bruyne and it'd still yeah. be challenging. Yeah. So what about Man City to do the quadruple then? For me, no, they're definitely losing the Carabao Cup Tottenham in that one. Well, if they're ever going to do it, it'll be this year, I think. It'd be a weird. It, was, it would be a weird. It's one of those weird years, isn't it? When obviously with the COVID and everything else going on, it's the sort of thing that just might happen. You know. I wonder if they get to the final of the League Cup, the FA Cup, and Champions League and lose the whole lot. Mm. That'd be some. Something, <laughs> wouldn't it? Guardiola would be. Guardiola would be. If he won, if he won the Champions League, he wouldn't care about anything else, would he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if he does the Champions League and the League double, like that's a some achievement in itself. Like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, elsewhere in the news, boys, uh, Super Bowl is this week. Who are we going for? Or have you followed it at all? Clearly, the Chiefs. The Chiefs, obviously, the favourites. Um, mm -hmm. However, there's always the quarterback on the other side, isn't there? That, that has a, a way of winning these things. Um, and again, you, you, you look at weird things that happen in, in time, and this could be another one of them weird things that happen in time. Yeah, to be honest, 
I would nearly side with Tom Brady on this in the Buccaneers. Just because it is Tom Brady and he's been at so many Super Bowls and he's got that experience. He'll be tough to tough to beat them. But didn't the Chiefs win last year? They did, yeah. Right, so they've been there as well. So probably the majority, the same quarterback as last year, is it? Yeah, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, so again, he's he's got his winner's ring as well, hasn't he? So you, you could argue, well, actually, they, they come with experience too. Should be a good game. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's definitely one that you'd be staying out to watch. Um, yeah, elsewhere, boys, anything else? I'm going to I'm gonna give a little shout out. Um, I know um, most people would probably know we follow the horses a little bit as well. And you, you obviously do your, uh, your racing records for the for the horse race. And I'd just like to give a little shout out to a local trainer down here, Colin Tizard, who's had a bit of a struggle. Um, it's been a bit difficult. He's not had a winner since December the 22nd. And today, um, Rose of Arcadia won for him at Wincanton. Um, he also had a couple of third places. I think one was at Flo- Foss Lass and one was at, at Wincanton and, uh, in, in a later race. So just like to give a, a thumbs up to, to Colin and um, hopefully this will see a turn of uh, form for him and some of his horses can get back to proper form and we can see him in his true light and maybe have a couple of winners at Cheltenham. So come on, Colin, keep it going. Yeah, for, for a big yard like Tessard, like you'd be... You wouldn't expect that much of a drive, but it's really great to see him get back up and going. Obviously, you know, he lost family member or whatever, and that has massively affected them. So it's great to see them getting back up and going. They have a big breakaway run this weekend, so that could be another winner for them. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hope so. And Kieran, anything? Yeah, I just thought last night the Brighton game with Liverpool was a massive shock. He didn't really touch on that at all, I thought. It'd be more of a topic, to be honest. It was, I'd say, that's, that was their chance gone. I think that's them finished completely now. I think that was their last. You can't drop any more points. Like, you couldn't, they couldn't afford to drop anything else. And then they lost to Brighton, which, again, couldn't believe it. But I thought it was very interesting. Brighton were only 5-1 to one to beat Liverpool in that game. I thought it was a very short price for them. But, as I say, Liverpool are missing a few players here and there. So, probably doesn't make sense in the bookies' eyes. But, I said, that's Liverpool gone now. I think that was a massive shock, even though they were missing the players. But I think that was one that caught my eye, definitely. Last day. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think Liverpool. the price is again the reflection of all these away wins. Not that Brighton should be going to Anfield and win, and given Liverpool had only they lost to Bur- uh, Burnley the other week for the first time in what three years or whatever. Um, so it was a it was a massive shock, and you would expect them to be bigger. I think that price is a reflection of what's going on in this league this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah and obviously Liverpool missing Allison is huge. Like, mm. Yeah. Playing. Eugene Callagher and Nelson yeah, right. he's very inexperienced they, they probably should have signed the keeper on deadline day even if it was just anyone at all like Adrian is useless yeah he's, like, he, he's, he's terrible. Terrible. I, I don't know if they still actually own Carius do they is he out on loan uh, actually a good one not 100% sure on that one now See, that they could have well have brought him back yeah just give him another chance. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can find never forgiven uh, for that. <laughs> yeah, no, probably not. He'll never be forgiven for that. No. Um, yeah, and Liverpool signed two centre backs on deadline day. Yeah. So they definitely needed that, but are the centre backs any good? That's the big That's question. True. Yeah, but not big. Signing one from Preston and one from Schalke. Yeah. It's it's, it's a big step up from Preston now to go up there. I know I, I do follow Preston a little bit and he is very, very good, but from Preston to Liverpool it's it's a big step up. Big leap, yeah. Yeah, you look at you look at the young kid who played um I think it was against was it against Tottenham? I can't remember. There was a game uh the, the, the young Liverpool lad who played and he was a little bit out of his depth. Oh, it was in the cup. I think it was in the cup game against uh, Man United. Man United, yeah, uh, Williams. Yeah. Yeah, he made he made a couple of mistakes that day, and you could see that he just needs a bit more time. He's a good player, don't get me wrong, but he just he's not ready for that step up, I don't think. And, and the same will apply to this this guy from Preston as well, I think. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think they need game time. Um, I suppose they could just try 
the foul from Pratt and you know he he can't knock him until you try him I suppose can't be much um, at the moment anyway exactly and two million is not much for a top top team like Liverpool like it's no. pocket money really isn't it yeah um, yeah we'll move on to the 1 to 100 challenge this did not go well the past two weeks for myself no. Um, anything I up in this seems to lose so today or whenever I'm going to go for a double this week um, firstly I'm going to go City to beat Liverpool and I am going to go for Tottenham to beat West Brom um, that is pricing up at 37 to 20 so I should get 286 back from my euro <laughs> watch both of losing yeah the jinx is on. So I've seen I've seen this on your on your previous videos, Ryan. So the idea is that um, I pick a team, it wins, and then next week I'll put the money on all the, all the yeah. way through, yeah, till I get to a hundred pounds or a yeah. hundred bets. A hundred pounds. Or either. <laughs> or neither. Uh, if we um, go on mine, it'll be a hundred losing bets. <laughs> Oh, we won't get there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play safe. I'm gonna pick Accrington Stanley to beat Northampton in the yeah. championship. I think they're seven to ten. It's a short price. However, I've got a hundred bets to go, so uh, something short to get me off and running. I think Accrington scored six or seven in the week. Um, they're on fire at the moment. They, um, they played my local side Plymouth uh, last weekend. They drew two each. They, they're good going forward. Um, they score goals. Northampton, they're down the bottom. They're they're starting to struggle. Um, I think uh, I think it's a safe home banker for me, Accrington Stanley. Yeah, and Kieran, yourself? Uh, I'm going to go against here, Ryan, and against what I've been saying myself. But I'm going to say Liverpool to beat Man City. At I think it's about the five. I think it is. But yeah. my logic behind that is now they have to win. Like the, there's no two ways about it. They have to go in and win this game. Like. If they have any chance or any hope of salvaging their title leg, like. so twelve to five, I think it's a must-win game, and they're going to come out all guns blazing. So I'm going to stick my bet on Liverpool. I think twelve to five. So that'll be my one. <laughs> well, we all know what's happening here. It's going to be a nil-nil draw now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Get the money on, folks. I should have Liverpool plus one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Anything else, lads? No, I think we covered most things this weekend anyway. I think yeah. we got I think we got most things covered. Um yeah, one one of the teams to watch out for is Brentford. They're starting to kick into form. Um they're a good price away at Middlesbrough. Uh 13 to 10 to win at Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough haven't scored in their last three home games. Brentford scored seven at home to Wickham. It was only Wickham, but they beat they beat Wickham 7 2 at the weekend. Um, the last time Middles were scored at home was against Luton when they won 1 0. Um, and since then, they've lost to Rotherham, Blackburn, and Birmingham all at home. So I think Brentford, who are on form at the moment, 13 to 10 to beat Middlesbrough, might be a good price. Yeah, that looks good. And Brentford look almost certain to go up to the Premier League next year as well. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah well, that wraps up everything, lads, for this week. Hope you've enjoyed coming on. And. Hope As everyone watch, wide watching it as well. So be sure to drop a like, and we'll be back next week for more. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, man.